other new programs that will help, and in addition to the little card that we were showing people, the emergency card, that there are types of QR identification codes and mm -hmm. things that people can wear. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, um, some friends of mine in Santa Clarita started a nonprofit called If I Need Help, okay. and they're using QR code IDs to uh, to put on people's clothes for people who can't tolerate medical jewelry sure. in particular. They have patches, shoe tags, uh, other types of things, that dog tags. And people can scan this ID with a smartphone and up pops whatever information the parent or caregiver wants to appear. Mm -hmm. So if someone's at Disneyland and they get lost and you scan the QR code, it says, please bring them to security booth number three. Okay. Please bring John and talk about Star Wars while you're coming over here. Right. You know, or please call this cell phone number. Personalized ways it's to get them home safely. Right. But you're not telling their name or their diagnosis or anything like that. You're, you're customizing sure. the message. If the person goes missing, um, you can they have a, a form you fill out that's all ready to go, and if they go missing, you can okay. you know, get all hands on deck. Now, it sounds like very new technology, and I know that QR codes have really only come into sort of pop culture in the last maybe five years or so. Yes. What do you do in terms of teaching law enforcement officers and safety officers at places like amusement parks and so forth to recognize a QR code ID? Well, um, you know, if I Need Help is only one of the organizations doing it, but their patch says, if I need help, and then the QR code. There's no formal training. national training, and there's no consistency, and there's lots of people using QR codes all over the country independently of one another, but seeing yeah. it as a possible solution. But um, it's becoming more popular, it sounds like. It is, like. and they've had some success stories already, like uh, somebody at a soccer field, a child, a child with autism got lost, and somebody saw them, saw the If I Need Help patch, sure. scanned, it, scanned it, and had the parent's cell phone number like that so they could so, call and say, I have them. For those people who may not know, if I'm wearing a, a QR code and I, it says I need help or if I'm found, what do you do as, let's say, Johnny Civilian out there? Well, if you know what a QR code is, some and people don't. It's these little. It's a square that looks like it's made out of black and white uh, dots or okay. pixels, okay. and you're you have a smartphone app mm -hmm. that's called a QR code reader, and you just put that code. You read the code with your smartphone, and it connects to something. So, like okay. it, where I live, they have them at the bus stop, and you can find out when the next bus is coming by right. scanning the QR code. There's all sorts of uses for them. Okay. And this one is to communicate live to help somebody before the police even need to get involved. So that's what So that could be communicating with family members or whoever you've designated in that QR yes. information. Okay, so you've heard it from Emily. It's basically you just take your smartphone, hold your camera or your QR code app, which basically looks like you're about to take a picture. It puts it in between the bars. It'll line up the QR code, and you can scan that and help an individual get back to safety or back to their family.